incredibly glad you joined us here today at Church of the Rock. If this is your first time, let me encourage you to go to JesusOfTheRock.org. Then you can check out our latest blog posts, you can look at our latest podcasts, or you can give to our ministries financially by clicking on the giving button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Now, as you go through this message, I pray that God works life change into your life and welcome to Church on the Rock. Luke 17, verse 11 said, As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria, and as he entered the village there, ten lepers stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, praise God, he fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked, didn't I heal 10 men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Where are the other nine? I don't like to open a message with a disclaimer, or, uh, but I almost feel like I need to with this because if, as I said, if you were here uh, Thanksgiving of this past year, I used this very same text. And I preached a message you may remember called an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude. And in that message, I talked about, um, I talked a, a little about the nine who didn't come back to say thank you, but we're really focused on, on this one who had an attitude of gratitude, this one who came back. Today, three months later, I kind of want to do part two of that um, and I guess if I were going to talk about, uh, give this a title or a thought, I would say an attitude of ingratitude. And I want to focus not so much on the one that came back, but on the nine that didn't. I don't really want us to look so much at what happened that day as I want to look at what didn't happen. Where are the other nine? I'm almost certain that... <clears throat> Everyone here has, at one time or another, as Carl said, we've, had, we've lost our patience. Um, I'm sure everyone here has been on the receiving end of ingratitude in one form or another. When, when you feel like that you've been over backwards to try and help someone and you do for them and do for them and do for them only to have them turn around and get mad at you the first time you say no. You ever been there? Or, or maybe you say, I can't help you this time or I can't help you the way you're wanting me to help you. Maybe I can do this, but I can't do that. And, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you've gone from a hero to a zero that fast. You've gone from their best friend to their worst enemy that fast. And you're thinking, you know, what of all the ingratitude? I mean, we deal with it here all the time. It, it seems that sometimes those you try the hardest to help are those who seem to be the most ungrateful. And that, that gets discouraging sometimes. Um, we've all felt that. And if we're honest, I suppose most of us have probably been on the other end of that also. We've probably taken other people for granted, haven't we? Those who maybe helped us get where we are because wherever you are, we're not naive enough to believe we got here on our own, are we? We know that whatever maybe measure or level of success we've achieved, whether in our, our careers or, or wh whatever, we know that somebody helped us get there. Maybe it was our parents or maybe it was our, uh, a friend or maybe it was a mentor or, or it, was some, you know, it was somebody, but, but there, was, there was somebody that was helping to push us on. We didn't get where we are by ourselves. It may have even been an enemy. Someone, someone said one time that everybody has a purpose, even if their purpose is to be a bad example. Think about that. 
Sometimes you look at people and, and, and you ought to write them a thank you note and say, thank you for being who you are because I know now what not to do. Right? Everybody's got a purpose, even if their purpose is to be what not to do. So um, all of us are where we are and we've, we've attained what we have because somebody has helped us and we may have been ungrateful at times. Or we may not have been ungrateful, but we may not have shown our gratitude. Here's the interesting thing about ingratitude. The recipient of the ingratitude, the person who feels like you haven't, you haven't said, even said thank you, you're not grateful, they recognize it right off. It's, it, they feel it right away. I can't believe that after all I've done, they haven't even said thank you. And interestingly, though, the, the initiator or the person showing ingratitude is rarely aware of it. They don't, they don't really think about it. They just don't think about it. And we see this in relationships all the time. I mean, everything's going along just fine, and, and you know, you feel like, you know, bluebirds are singing in the air, everything's lovely, and, and, and you come home, though, and all, let me, all, all the men can probably, all the husbands can probably relate to this. You come home, something's just not right. There's just something in the air. You don't really know what it is, and so you, you step out on a limb and say, what's wrong? And for about the first three or four times, you hear nothing, right? But you not, you got more going on than that. You know, oh, well, there's something. And after about the fourth time, you finally say, are you going to tell me what's wrong? And, and, and you're going to hear these words. I just feel unappreciated. I just feel unappreciated. I, you never say thank you. I just feel like that, you know, I, I feel neglected and, and I feel like that you don't appreciate what I do and you never show gratitude. Now, when that happens, there's two responses. One, we're going to call the wise response. Husbands, listen up. It will go something like this. Sweetheart, you are so right. I've neglected you. I've been so caught up in my own world that I failed to appreciate you the way that I should. Please forgive me because you know what? I'm going to do better with that because I really do love and appreciate you so much. I can't imagine being on this journey without you, and I'm so thankful for you. Or... Response number two. Response number one, problem solved. Especially if you follow up with it, everything's good. Response number two is going to go something like this. What about me? You don't feel appreciated. What about me? You remember that just... Just a few months ago, I come in and couldn't find a dish. I unloaded the whole dishwasher. You remember? Did anybody say thank you to me? You know, I mean, we, we may go back three years and pull out that one thing we did, but we're going to find something that somebody didn't say thank you. Well, you've set yourself up for a long night at best. See, the problem is normally the one failing to show his or her gratitude is not doing it because they're not grateful. That's not why they're doing it. They are grateful. They have gratitude. The problem is it's just not spoken we're, we're grateful for that person, but for some reason, we find it difficult to release that gratitude to somebody else. These nine lepers who didn't show back up to say thank you, that doesn't mean they weren't grateful. I guarantee you they were grateful. In fact, they probably told everybody about Jesus but Jesus. They pro man, I met a man. He told us to do this. This guy is all, he just, it wasn't that they weren't grateful. It's just that they didn't come back. They never spoke their gratitude to the Lord. They never released it back to him. And listen to this. This is a really important statement I'm going to tell you. Unspoken gratitude is no better than no gratitude. 
Unreleased gratitude is no better than no gratitude. Gratitude's only effective when, when we release it and offer it back to the person who has done something or spoken something or put something, invested something into our lives. I mean, I've said this before. You can have a lot of love for me. You can go all over town and say, we got the best pastor. We just love him. We love, but, but it doesn't do me any good unless you give that love to me, right? You can have a million dollars for me, but I'll starve to death if you don't give it to me, right? There's a difference in having gratitude for somebody and giving gratitude to somebody. And gratitude only comes to life when it is expressed. John was laughing. He said, you know, because he said he got up and read this little thank you note this morning that somebody sent. And he had heard the first in the early service when I walked in. Sometimes I look for confirmations when I'm getting ready to preach a message. You know, is this really the right message for today? And I had this on my mind this morning. I came in and I found another one in my mailbox. And we bought a piece of glass several weeks ago, a pretty large piece of glass from Dixie Glass. And it says, thank you from all of us. And it says, we know you could have went anywhere, but you chose us. And for that, we say thank you. We appreciate your business and look forward to seeing you in the future. Now, that's good marketing. That's good business. But it also says, hmm, you know, that's nice of them. I mean, it's just a business. I needed glass. That, you know. But somebody took the time to fill this out and send it out and say, thank you for using us, not using, you know, gratitude. Um, in our text, Jesus has healed 10 lepers. We, what we don't know, there's some things we don't know. We don't know how far the priest was away. It could have been as little as 30 minutes. It could have been as much as five days, depending on which priest that they, they were going to. Um, but we're not told how far it was along. It says while they were going, they were healed. And then it says that one returned to Jesus. Now, we don't know if that took him 20 minutes to come back to Jesus or if it took him two days or three days or four days. But, but we see that one came back to express his gratitude. And Jesus asked this question, I think a bit sarcastically, really. I think it was kind of tongue-in-cheek. But he says, what, weren't there 10? I mean, am I confused here? Were you the only... Did the, did the other nine not get anything? You the only one got this? Or what? Then he says, where are the other nine? And that, that little phrase, that little question is just what kind of perked this in my mind. Where are the other nine? In other words, there's something missing in this picture. This, this situation is left open-ended. It's not, it's not finished yet. You know, now, I mean, I could, I could write Dixie Glass back and say, hey, thank you for the great thank you notes you sent me and do that. I mean, I, but that's not really, you know, okay, I gave them business. They said thank you. It sort of brings it full circle and says, you know, no, enough said. But Jesus recognized that there's something here that's, that's left undone. Um, most of us experienced this when we were small. If you were small and someone came and maybe another child came and shared their toys with you, or maybe a big person came and gave you a piece of candy, or maybe they gave you a quarter, or maybe they just stopped to tie your shoe, and, 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 you, stood there, and you just stood there. You took the candy, got into the candy, whatever, and your parents would ask you this very specific question or words. Somebody said it. What do you say? What do I say? What do you? But we didn't. We knew what they meant, didn't we? What do you say? And then we got to, you know, we got to come up. We, it's like we wish we had thought of it on our own, but we didn't. So thank you. What do you say? It's like there's something unended. This deal is not complete until you show gratitude. 
Now, by the way, that's called training up a child in the way they should go. Someone did something for you, you say thank you. You show gratitude. You don't leave it open-ended. When someone reaches out to you in a big way or a small way, you reciprocate that good deed with gratitude. Whether that's a spoken word, thank you. Whether that's a thank you note or a, a, a small gift or something, whatever, you let that person know they are appreciated. Now, let me brag just a little bit. Let me tell you about my grandbabies. My grandbabies, they're both under three. In fact, Ava's, today's her birthday. She's two today, turning two. Patterson's like two and a half something, and, and they're both under three, though. But when they come to Poppy and Mimi's house, the first thing they want is animal. Yeah, John told me he was going to find a picture. Good. The first thing they want is animal quackers. It took me a while saying, you want what? And, and I finally got animal quackers. So now I know. So Poppy and Mimi have to keep a good supply of animal quackers. They come to the pantry door and they point to it and they say, animal quackers. So uh, I'll go sit them down. Me or Mimi one will sit them down and we'll get a bowl and we'll put animal quackers in there and we'll go put it down in their lap. And, and the first thing they do is they say, thank you, Poppy. Thank you, Mimi. These kids, as I said, are under three. They could get a car if they wanted one. <laughs> Just by saying, thank you, Poppy. I mean, Poppy, Poppy is done for. Whatever you want, child, <laughs> is yours, okay? Why? Because it just melts your heart. This, these children, they say, thank you, Poppy. Thank you, Mimi. And, and you know, and, and, and if you say thank you, they say, Ooh, welcome. <laughs> Ooh, welcome. They close the situation with that. And, and uh, it melts my heart. Why? Because we all like to be appreciated for doing something good. It, it sort of closes the deal. Now, here's what, here, here, was, here was my, my struggle, because you may be saying, all right, I get that, I get that, and that's cute with the babies, but is this really a big deal? I mean, come on, Pastor, this is Sunday morning. We got heaven and hell stuff to deal with here, right? We got eternities and all. The time. There's, there's lives that hang in the balance. Is this really a big deal? Well, let me, let me say this. Jesus seemed to think so. Jesus seemed to think so. The writer Luke seemed to think that of all the things Jesus did, miracles, he seemed to think this was important enough to record so that 2,000 years later we're still reading it. It seems to me that this was something that Jesus says, this, this, this is going to be important. We're told how it affected Jesus that nine out of ten of these men didn't come back. It had an effect on Jesus. And see, what makes this so important, and I believe it's the issue affecting every single relationship in your life right now, either in a positive way or a negative way. You may not realize it, but it is affecting every relationship in your life. And here's why. We said that unexpressed gratitude is often received as ingratitude. It's no better than ingratitude. Unexpressed gratitude is just as bad as no gratitude. Now here's taking a step further. Ingratitude is often received as rejection. Jesus no doubt felt rejected by these other nine. And that's how ingratitude's received sometimes. Think of it this way. God made us like this. Our hearts gravitate toward acceptance, and our hearts repel away from rejection. And if ingratitude is a very subtle form of rejection, and here's, what's, here's what you need to know. Here's where we step it up a notch. Here's where it really gets rubber meets the road to you. You, you need to understand that you can ingratitude someone right out of your life. You can, you can 
ingratitude someone right out of the marriage. You can ingratitude someone right off the job. Now, you may say, well, wait a minute. I pay them. Why should I have to say thank you? Right? I mean, why, why should I? I married them. Why should I have to say thank you for being my husband? Thank you for being my wife. You know, uh, I, I gave birth to them. Why should I say thank you for cleaning your room or getting good grazer? Or, or you're my parents. I didn't ask to be born. Why should I say thank you for washing my clothes or cooking my dinner? And the truth is, you don't. You can just be ungrateful. Or you can even be grateful but never give that thanks back to them. But just remember this, you can in gratitude someone right out of your life. Now, let's take it one step further. Let's explore this question. Let's explore this question. Why wouldn't I want to express gratitude to the people who are most important in my life? say, I, I'm thankful, I just, you know, wh why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Don't get upset with me, but let me give you one possibility. It may be because you have an overinflated view of yourself. I really don't need to say thank you. They work for me. I'm their husband. I go work every day. That's my kids. They're supposed to do this. I really don't. You may have an overinflated view of yourself. You really don't think you need to say thank you or express gratitude. There's a scripture that warns us to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. And it also warns us that pride always leads to destruction. You may just have to ask yourself, am I too proud? to express gratitude to another person? Is pride really at the base of this? Am I too proud to say thank you? I just couldn't do this without you or I wouldn't want to be on this journey without you. I am so thankful that you're in my life. Gratitude, it's not enough to feel it. It's not enough to feel it. Effective gratitude has to be expressed. Unexpressed gratitude is the same as ingratitude and often feels like rejection. So in relation to our story, you, you ask yourself, am I the one who comes back or am I the nine? I'm grateful, I have gratitude, but I'm just not good at expressing it. I just feel awkward saying, I'm thank you. I don't feel like I need to express. Okay, don't. But don't be surprised when you've ingratituded these people right out of your lives. Spouses need to hear your heartfelt gratitude. Your children need to hear your heartfelt gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Your parents need to hear. Your, kid, let me say something to kids just a minute. I know you don't believe this, but do you know your parents get tired? They get tired of doing and doing and doing and picking up and cleaning and cooking and doing and never hearing thank you? They really do. Everybody does. That's your, your employees need to hear it. Your employers need to hear it. And, and here's the crazy thing. It doesn't cost you a thing. It doesn't cost you a thing. In fact, it will create for you a better spouse, better children, better parents, better friends, better employees, better employers. We end up reaping the benefits for our own gratitude. All right, I'm going to try to bring this in for a landing. Here's the big problem with this message. This is where I really struggled with. Because chances are, right now, this is one of those messages, chances are you, you, you are sitting in very close proximity to someone who right now is saying, wow, I am so glad pastor's preaching this message. <laughs> Because I'm telling you, I was just about to preach it myself. 
I am so glad I felt neglected and taken for granted and rejected. Maybe now, finally, I'll get some affirmation and appreciation that I feel like I deserve. Now, here, here's the problem. Because you're sitting here thinking to yourself, let me tell you, I know this about you because I've sat where you sat. You're thinking, well, if I go home and do it now, she's going to say, he's going to say, the only reason you did it is because pastor stood up there and told you to. <laughs> Come on, am I right? I mean, I have ruined it now, you know. It's like this is the one day you wish your spouse wouldn't have been here or your kids or your parents, you know, and, and it's going to be like, it's not really coming from me. I mean, you're wishing they had stayed at home today so you could go home and do this and they would think it's your idea, right? Can I tell you, that's pride too. That's pride too. Some, now, here's some of you. Some of you have already taken this further. You think, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to wait a few days. They'll forget all about it. And then I'll do something, and they'll think it's my idea. That's pride, too. Let me, tell you the, let me tell you the problem if you choose to go that route. I'm just going to warn you. I'm just going to be honest with you. You choose to go that route, and you think, I'm just going to put this one on the shelf for a little while, and then I'm going to come up here. I'm going to get some flowers next week or whatever. If you do that, you're going to go home today, and I'm going to tell you if you are going to be in worse shape than you have ever been because here's what that person in close proximity is feeling. I can't believe they sat there through that message, and still, I haven't even got a thank you. And I haven't even got one thing. <laughs> You're like, man, I am in a lose lose situation here. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Let me tell you what that person sitting around you would rather you do. I'm going to give you your out right here. They would rather go home and hear you say, hey, sit down for a minute. I heard what pastor was saying today. And you know what? I realized I'm one of the nine, not the one. And I want you to understand this, not because I don't appreciate you, I, I am so grateful for you, but I haven't been very good at telling you that. And I just want you to forgive me, and I want you to know how thankful I am to be on this journey with you, how thankful I am to have you in my life. And I understand, if unexpressed gratitude bothered Jesus that much, how much more must it be bothering you? And I am really, really sorry. You do that, it is a win-win. It's a win-win. You don't, you're on your own. I can't help but think about the numbers here. One came back, nine didn't. That's 90% who didn't come back. And I thought this morning, I thought, I wonder what percent We'll walk out of the church today thinking, you know what? He's right. He's right. It's been a long time since I've said thank you, since I've shown the gratitude, since I've done something to say, I appreciate you. He's right. And then not do anything about it. I think that's why James, the brother of Jesus, said, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. Because if you're a hearer of the word and not a doer, you deceive your own self. It's not enough to say, boy, that was, that was really true. That was a, that was a, somebody walked out this morning and, and uh, said, best sermon this year, Pastor. Good. Again, we are so incredibly glad you joined us here today at Church on the Rock. Now, if this message encouraged you in any way, let me encourage you to go to JesusTheRock.org and let us know about it. Those type of messages encourage us as we work throughout the week. 
While you're there, check out our latest podcast or give to our ministries financially by clicking on the giving button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Again, thank you for joining us today and have a blessed week.